what does it require? What does it take for you to build a new life, a new life in 2021? Well, I have several things for you to think about and it's going to require your participation. So go ahead and get a piece of paper, a notebook or a pen, because I know that you don't want to have another year like 2020. Some of us just don't want to have another day like we had yesterday. Dolores Jones, your comeback coach is my name. I'm here to coach you through the bad things, the good things, and uh, all those other things in between, right? Hello to you all. I see Darius is in the building. And let me know what state you're watching from. I can rep your whole state. Is that all right? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how do you build a new life for yourself? How do you build a new life for yourself? Now, in order to build a new life for yourself, you're going to have to make some major shifts, some major shifts in what you say, how you say it, how you think, how you feel, what you entertain, you know, who you hang around. There's, there's a lot of pieces to this, but you're capable. Jacksonville, Florida is in the building. So let me know where you're watching from so I can shout you out. I had somebody from Africa the other day from Kenya. I'm, I'm just loving the love that you all are giving to me here on my YouTube channel, Dolores Jones TV, as well as Facebook and Instagram at My Comeback Coach. You all are the bomb diggity. I think I just dated myself, Christopher. So anyway, we're talking about how to build a life, a new life for you. Oklahoma, one of the things is don't spend time trying to break down the old because you're going to need all of the energy all of your energy needs to go into creating a major shift in your life. What are some of the steps that you need to take? What are some of the things you need to do? Who do you need to become in order to have that new life? Now, we are all the same. The things that separate us are choices and habits. As Les Brown says, it's the choices we make and the habits we embrace. That's the difference. Denzel Washington once said, dreams without goals are just dreams. In other words, when you recognize what it is you want, you must have a plan. You must have an understanding of how to get there. And then you must have a plan of action. And then you must execute. You must execute, you must implement, and it has to be consistently. So for example, I was trying to build my YouTube channel and my presence on social media. And a lot of my friends who've done it, they've always encouraged me for the last several years, Dolores, you need a podcast, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, Dolores had to get out of my own way. And when I say get out of my own way, I had to stop entertaining negative thoughts that I may have picked up. I had to really do what they call self-awareness. I had to look at my life and I had to say, okay, how did you get here? What, what decision or what choices did you make that placed you right here? Because if you get the correct steps, if you have the right information, then you can go in a different direction. So they said to me, one of the things you have to work on, Dolores, is consistency. I said, okay, that means consistency. People want to see you. They want to hear you. You need to let them know when you're going to be there. And if you say you're going to be on social media and you say you're going to do this, you have to do it. People are counting on you. In other words, you gave your word. Now you must produce because I had a habit of doing a video and then coming back maybe a month later. And that is not how you build a social media following that really is, is going to become a part of your community. So I had to start doing that. And one of the challenges was I was so worried about what I'm going to look like. Oh, my God, I can't do that. I don't have no makeup on. And so I started to align myself with various social media groups. And one in particular is April Franks. And she has a group called Align, Build and Monetize. Well, you already know what that means. She's going to help you align to what it is you want. She's going to show you how to build it. And then she's going to show you how to make money in doing it. And one of the things she said is people don't care what you look like. You just need to come on and give them the information. And I thought, what? And so she started doing that. Sometimes she would come on the video with no makeup on. And she was just, you know, and I found that I was, I was gravitating more to her because she was more authentic. So I said, okay, that's one of the things I need to do. In other words, you're going to remove the barriers that are keeping you from being and doing what it is you must do in order to become the person you know you want to be. Choices, 
and habits. I know that sounds like, uh, really? Yes. Think about some of the choices you've made in your life over the last 15 years. How do they work out for you? Think about some of the decisions that you made that you knew you shouldn't have made. How did that work out for you? That's a part of that self-awareness. Who am I? What have I done? What do I need to do better in order to become this person I want to be? If you're into finances, one of the things you can do is identify somebody who's doing what it is you need that you want to do and do it. For example, I said I wanted to be like Oprah. So some of my mentors said, well, what does Oprah do? She didn't just talk on television. She didn't just wake up one morning and she was on television. And I found out she was a journalist. So I went to a journalism school. And then from there, I had to learn the skills of what it means to be a journalist. And what does it mean? How should you uh, talk to people? What does it mean to be conversational? So you're not just sitting there, you know, asking people a series of questions, active listening. How can I listen and not anticipate what you're going to say and and not make you say what I want to hear? Right. How do I keep that experience very authentic? Because if I try to control the interview, per se, then I'm going to miss out on something very, very authentic. And that could be very beneficial to the people who want to hear this video. Dolores Jones, your comeback coach, is my name. I'm here with you on another beautiful day of 2021. I think it's the seventh. Can y'all believe that? It's the seventh. Seven. God's number of completion. So we're going to help you complete your week with something that you can control and you'll feel better about it. So number one, you need to do self-assessment, self-awareness, sit down and just spend some time with yourself and write it down. Okay. So say for instance, you said one of the things you wanted to do that was going to better your life is you needed to lose weight because you know, your health was in danger. Okay. So one of the things could be, well, what is it that you need? I need discipline. What's the discipline? I need the discipline to eat what I'm supposed to eat. And I need discipline not to eat what I'm not supposed to eat. And then you look to see how well did you do? Now, sometimes you will become discouraged when you try to do too much. I'm going to say that again. You may become discouraged when you're trying to do too much. Sometimes we enroll in too many classes or too many workshops and you're all over the place. Okay, so find the person that you you learn from. Everybody's teaching style is very different. If Dolores Jones is is the person that speaks your language and, and you love my teaching style, then come and hang with me. Because they're going to be every, there are a whole lot of people doing various things. And some of them are the same things, but they're doing them in a different way. So save yourself some time and some money. Identify no more than, I would say, three people. Now, if you have to deal with marketing, you find your top marketer. If you have to deal with branding, you look at a person who's branding. If you're trying to build your social media community, you look at somebody who's doing it. If you're trying to monetize your YouTube channel, then you look at the people that you follow and ask yourself questions like, what do I like that they're doing? Why do I keep coming back? So a part of building a new life deals with a lot of asking questions. Asking questions and having the conversation with yourself. And once you have that conversation with yourself, not just to keep it in your mind, you need to put it on paper. There's something in our brain called the reticular activating system. What is that? R-A-S. The reticular activating system in your brain is a part of your brain that says whatever you focus on is what it's going to pay attention to. So if you make your mind up, like people say, you need a made up mind, you make up your mind that you're going to go back to school and you write that down. So all of a sudden, things that are going to become visual to you are going to be commercials about how to go back to school. And most of us say, look at God. OK. If you wanted to buy the car, whatever car you have right now, you knew that you wanted that car. And so your reticular activating system after you got that car, now you see all of those same cars on the highway and some people are mad. I didn't want everybody to have a car like I did. No, you actually now have a car like everybody else does. Is this making sense to you? If it's making sense to you, I want you to like and share the video. I would really appreciate that. Like and share the video. How do you build a new life? Get real with yourself. Get real with yourself. 
when Denzel Washington said dreams without goals are just dreams, what he means is you have this dream, but within your goals, that means there's something you must accomplish in order to reach or to to complete that goal. So let me give you a very easy example. Back when I was, oh my goodness, maybe uh, in my 20s, I took a class and the teacher gave us this paper, just one sheet of paper. And on it, at the top, she said, what is it that you want to accomplish? What's your goal? And I said, buy a house. So below that, said, what do you need to do to prepare yourself to buy this house? And it was three steps. One, I said, I need to go to a first time home buyers program. Two, I need to get my credit right. Three, I got to save some money. All right. So I made myself available to go to those courses. I had to complete the course and get the certificate. You understand? This is how we're going with that. Now, also your goals and the steps, they need to be time sensitive, meaning you need to know how to measure when you reached your goal. So when that class was over in six weeks and I had my certificate, I was like, okay, I was successful. I reached my goal. So then when I put all the pieces together, I was ready. I was so ready and I was able to find a house and I was able to receive free money because of the other things that I did in advance. I had my credit together. I had a budgeter that I had been working with. And when it came time to get my keys to my first house, I was elated. And the thing is, I bought that house making only $28,000 a year. So what did I learn is not necessarily how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. And you need to know about the opportunities out there. So if you're saying that you want your own business and you want to do this and you want to do that, are you associate? Are you even Googling where those opportunities are? Last night I went to a... Um, a networking event. So I made a promise to myself because I'm building a new life. Dolores, every time you say that you're going to do something for yourself in particular, you must do it. So last night, you know, I had a full day and easily back in the day, I would have said, well, I'll catch it next time. But yesterday I said, nope, you're going, you're going to do this because this is who you want to be. You want to be a successful entrepreneur. You want to have a clientele base. You want to take it to television. You want to take it here. And you want to expand your horizons. And you want to come out of your comfort zone. And the circles that you know so well. When you're the smartest person in your group, your group is too small. I've heard that over and over again. And it's true. Because usually if you're the smartest person in your group, most people are coming to you for information. But when you're in a different group and it challenges you, now you have to stretch. So when I went to that event last night, I ended up talking to a doctor and we just had a really nice conversation and he was telling me about his practice and he was telling me about why he was going to come and be a part of this co-op. And what a co-op is, is nowadays it's hard for you to afford some people to afford the overhead of having your own office. So some companies come in, they build, build, they take over buildings, they restructure them and they create offices on the inside. And so you can rent those rooms out of those offices for a month or you can rent it out for $10, $10 an hour. So that makes it doable for me. And I said to them, I said, so does this mean I put my office here at this location? When I do my business cards, I can put this address on there? Yes. And we'll give you a mailbox. Had I not gone through with what I said I was going to do, that step that I needed to take, I would not have made that connection and found out what I could afford. I could have, I would have been back in the day like, well, you know, you gotta have a building. No, there's so many different opportunities, but if you don't make yourself available, honey, they just gonna pass you by. Dolores Jones is my name, your comeback coach here, showing you how to bounce back better, not bitter through life experiences and bad decisions. You got what it takes. Now let's put it to work. We're talking about building a new life for yourself in 2021. Now what I want you to understand is if you don't start in January, don't get discouraged. Just dust yourself off and try again. It's baby steps. Baby steps count too. 
we have to remember that. Sometimes we want to, you know, we see social media and we see people at the end of their dream and they're doing the doggone thing. And so we think we got to go big or go home. No, you got to build. You got to be consistent. One of the things that Les Brown was talking about recently, he has a video out there called Reaching Your Greatness. And he talked about a seven, a seven day mental, a mental diet, a seven day mental diet. And I was like, what is that about? For seven days, you become aware of what you think and what you do and what you're saying. And so within those seven days, you can't say anything bad. <laughs> you can't do anything that's detrimental to who you are. You watch your language. You watch what you do. You watch who you are around for seven days. Because the truth of the matter is, the biggest battle that you will ever face is in your mind. It's the battlefield of the mind. Uh, there was this, well, y'all know what happened at the Capitol a few days ago. But I was reading about one of the uh, senators. And one of the senators, his son committed suicide. And I said, oh my. So I said, well, what happened? Because most people think, well, if your dad and your mom are doing this and y'all got all this money, then, you know, you don't have any problems. That's what some of us think, but that's not true. So this young man, he had to be about 20 years old and he left the suicide note and he said, these were his words. He said, today, the disease won. In other words, he was living with depression and his father and mother said he had the best doctors. He had the best care that you possibly could have. But in his mind, he was still battling and he was tired of fighting. And in order to really understand what that's like, I'm not saying you need to experience it, but I know what it's like because I've dealt with that. It's 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 excruciating. You, you have racing thoughts. You can't stop, you, you know, and, and it won't let you go. And so you have to figure out how to manage it. And for him, he asked his parents a couple of things. He said, listen, in my absence, keep taking care of, of poor people and animals. That's what he was passionate about. But he, he said he was done. The, the fight was over. So see, this is a part of paying attention to who you are, self-awareness, getting the help that you need, staying healthy. Having the support, mental support. If you need to talk to somebody, go ahead and talk to somebody. I talk to somebody. My name is Renee. And I try to talk with Renee through telehealth or in person once a week. It keeps me focused and grounded because we've all gone through something. And here's the thing. When you let go of one habit, don't think it's going to let go of you. Someone said it like this. You may be done with your past, but your past is not done with you. And I was like, well, God, well, how am I supposed to deal with that? And this was the answer I got. Tell your past that it's not open for discussion. I said what I said and it's over. The challenge is we keep bringing it back through telling the story. So now we have to change the story. We have to change the story well, let me tell you what happened to me. And I grew up and okay, now we know that you've grown and something happened to you. What did you do with it? You keep telling a story. How is that helping you? Now, if you want to make a point, you use a story and you use it to show that you accomplished something or you made it through something and it's something you want to pass on. That's fantastic. I have to check myself. I was like, Dolores, okay, your videos now, you, you got to do something a little different. Okay, yes, you know you've been through this and you've been through that. How can you how can you reframe that story where you can still get your point across, but you don't take yourself back into that actual day where you're feeling pissed off and you're ready to hurt somebody? Who do you want to be now? What does your new life look like? Did you write it down? Do you have a vision board? Vision boards really work. Did I tell you all about the one I made in 2007? I was, I was in the middle of, I think... Uh, uh, a very strenuous relationship. My marriage was uh, basically gone. It was it was done. You know how some things are done before they get started, but you still do them anyway. Okay, self reflection, self awareness. So I went to this course, and one of the assignments was to do a vision board. And a vision board is basically your vision in pictures. 
and you basically look at what it is you want and you put it on the vision board and you pay attention to the vision board. Because now the vision board is the focus of what you say you want to attract and bring into your life. All right. So I did two. One was I wanted to be a better mother, better mother, because I had gone through a divorce and, you know, that whole custody thing and visitation. And I was losing sight of who I needed to be as a mother because I was so accustomed to fighting the father. And you can't move forward fighting. You can either get ahead or you can get even. So long story short, I put a picture of my son and I in the middle and I found words that said uh, wonderful mother. And then in one corner, I think I had something like woman that I lose or I had something with Tyler Perry. And I had pictures in one corner of me on a yacht, you know, because I'm envisioning this. So then and they had other things and I still have these. Right. So then I did a second board. And on this board, Oprah Winfrey was on it and she was in like an up in the corner next to my business card. So I took my business card and I put it next to Oprah. And then I put some other things. I put a white convertible on there. I didn't know what kind it was, but I put a white convertible on there with, with like, what is it? What do they call that thing? Uh, uh, burnt orange material. I mean, it was so beautiful. And some other things, right? And I put a million dollars in woman of wealth. Well, eventually I didn't even think about it. But somebody said, Dolores, this is going to come true. And so just be ready. And I'm like, okay. One day Bill Cosby decided they had a project and I decided to tell my story. And he captured the story and he turned the stories and the people that he spoke to, he gave them an opportunity and then he put it in a book. Can you believe that? He put it in a book. Well, that book was released on the Oprah Winfrey show. And so before the show, I got a call from Chicago, from one of her producers. Are you Dolores Jones? Yes. This is so-and-so with the Oprah Winfrey show. I said, shut up, (laughs) but keep on talking. Hey, we read about you in this book and we want to fly you to Chicago so that uh, you can be a part of this discussion. And I'm like, OMG. So next thing you know, uh, I was planning to go to Chicago, all expenses paid. And then I got mad. Why? Because at the time I was separated from my husband and they didn't know that. And so (laughs) they didn't know that. And so the problem was I was so upset. I was so upset about the fact that I had to fly with him. I was like, I ain't going to Chicago. I ain't going with him. No. So I called my girl, Jatina. She said, Dolores Jones, if D, if you don't get your tail on that plane. See, that's where you're, you're so you're off focus. You lost focus. The most important thing was going to the Oprah Winfrey show. What was I thinking about? I'm thinking about I got to be on the plane with him. 18 years of a dream coming to me, like right there for me. And I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Come on, somebody. How do you build a new life? You got to be about it. Okay, you need to be about this. Be about this thing. Be about it. Erica, hey, you got to be about it. Look at your choices. Look at your habits. What what is really going on? What are you really doing? How are you preparing yourself for the next move? Where do you want to be in your life? Some of us don't want to ask questions. We just want to do it. You know, like, I'm just going to feel my way through it. How's that working for you? Preparation is key. What you practice in private is what shows up in person. Hi, Kim. What you practice in person, what you practice in public, I mean, in private, Lord, help me, Lord, is what shows up in public. Think about it. You have the same number of hours of everybody else. Each day is 24 hours a day. The difference is, is how you choose to spend your 24 hours. If you want to spend them watching Jerry Springer and all those other people, 
then don't get mad when you don't reach your goal. Don't get mad. Just check yourself and say, okay, what did I do wrong that I need to do now? What can I do differently? And then do it. And you don't have to announce it to anyone. You don't have to ask for permission. You serve notice. All right. Make sure you like and share the video. Dolores Jones, your comeback coach is my name. I simply want to see you win. Sometimes you have to go back and, you know, revisit some of the things you said you really wanted because sometimes you may not want them anymore. They may no longer serve you. And that's okay. Here's a beautiful thing, because you can make choices and decisions. You can write something down and you have the power to change your mind. Iyanla is doing a series about freedom. And she said, freedom is your innate ability to make a choice. You get to choose. Oh, I'm stuck in this relationship. You're never stuck. You just got to make a move. And let me tell y'all something. Some people talk too much, ladies. I'm going to give you this story because I had to build my life. I had to build a new life after a divorce. And I said, this is not working, Jesus. But I knew it on the front end. I couldn't blame him. He didn't put a gun to my head and say, you got to marry me. So I found myself in a situation. So Dolores, what are you going to do? You can't cry wolf now. You're grown. You made this decision. I was like, okay, I got to go. But I needed all of my energy to shift and refocus and build a new life. So I just kept, I got up, I started working out Erica. You know, I had, a, I didn't have a personal trainer like Erica, but I was doing something. I had my gospel music playing. I was watching TD Jakes. I just positioned myself that every morning I started my day, I positioned myself with something positive that was going to feed my body, my heart, my soul, and my spirit. I had to take the time to really decide what I, what my next move was going to be. I said, okay, you're going to have to leave. Okay, now what you don't want to do is you don't need to engage in a conversation or, or an argument with him because he already knows it. I, I, I didn't spend my energy time. Like, you know what? You ain't going to never be nobody. And my mama was right about you and my daddy. That does not matter. How does that help you? It doesn't. I just started planning. I started planning what I was going to do. I had somebody in my house, so I rented a townhome, got the key, put it in my glove compartment box. Talk to the people I work for. Say, hey, I'm going to take a couple of days off because I got to move. I just kept my routine the same way. Just the same way. He said, good morning. I said, good morning. I washed clothes. I packed my clothes and my son's clothes. I put his in the drawer. Just the same way. And when it was time, the movers, I got up that morning like everything was all right. I kissed him. I love you. Have a great day. You have a great day too, baby. Got in my car, left, circled the block, came back, and the movers were there with that truck, and my family pulled up, and I had to bounce. It was about building a new life. Then I had to look at my values or my self-esteem and ask myself questions like, what is it about you that says this type of relationship is okay? What, What is it? Is it low self-esteem, Dolores? You feel like you can't do it? You know, because sometimes you can stay in a relationship too long. And the words, the words will go with you. And you're like, oh my God, maybe he was right. No, no. If God said you can do it, you can do it. You got to get busy. And it's not that you're not faithful. Here's the thing. Some people are faithful to dead things. Y'all know what that looks like, right? Tony. Okay. So um, the person you stay in a relationship with a person. You knew like in the third year that it wasn't healthy. And you look up, it's 10 years later. You keep going back to that. Maybe that's because that's all you think you can have. Or maybe it's because that's all you think you deserve. And there's not just one somebody for you. There are, do you know how many people are in the world? Now, maybe some of your preferences and some of your, some of your values and your beliefs create a barrier for you, but you need to decide, are these beliefs really serving me? 
We're talking about building a new life. You have to look at your choices that you make and the habits that you embrace. What is a habit? A habit is something that you continue to do over and over and over again. Scientifically, they say it takes 21 days to create a new habit. You have a habit. You get up in the morning, you take a shower, you brush your teeth, comb your hair. That, that's a habit. That's one of those habits. It's a routine. And maybe you have to change up your routine in order to get that which you really say you want. So in the comments, you know, I just, if you hear me, put a number one in there. If you're with me, put a number one, put a number one. You understand what we're talking about today, which is building a new life for yourself in 2021. Life is it, you know, life really is a series of experiences. So in order to build a new life, you need to position yourself so you can have different experiences. Got to stretch. Got to stretch. Now, can I be honest? All right, Angelique said, I got you. Put a one if you understand where I'm coming from. The other day, I just wanted to cry. I wanted to cry. Because I had to really take ownership for where I was or where I am. And I said, Dolores, what are you doing? You're 50 years young now. What are you doing, sweetheart? Why are you still working harder for somebody else than you're working for yourself? What's the problem? I see y'all with y'all number ones. And you either can give, you can produce excuses or results, but you can't give both of them. Jack Daniels said it like this, Jack A. Daniels. He said, excuses are sophisticated lies that we tell ourselves and we try to sell to somebody else. Sophisticated lies that we tell ourselves and we try to sell to somebody else. You know, people see your potential. They know that you have something good. And it may, you may say something like this. I'm just not interested anymore. And we can see it's all on you. Oh, I just, you know, girl, it's my time has come and gone. We're just looking at you. Mm -hmm. There are times I've wanted to cry and there are times I did cry. And then when I found out other successful people do the same thing, I was like, okay, I'm in good company because not everything is easy. Some things you have to do hard. Some things you have to do afraid. Do it while you're afraid. And then when you, you know, you do it, even the fact that you're going to attempt it is a victory already. They said that in order to get one win, you need to fail like a thousand times. And I was like, are you serious? So you have to become, you have to become comfortable with understanding failure is a part of the process. But it's not the end of the story. Failure shows you the things that aren't working. The only way you become a failure is when you stop completely. Go at it again. But this time, expect something to be better. Somebody said no. Well, there's a yes out there. Maybe you can, you know, play a game with yourself. Okay, I got it. Okay, I know I need this job and I know I want to work in this industry. So I'm going to play like I'm going to find a yes. So at every door you knock on, you know, maybe you get a no and you go, I know it's a yes out there. And then eventually you get the yes. You're like, yes, you're playing a game with yourself. Now, here's the thing. Don't take rejection so seriously because sometimes people can't handle you. In other words, maybe you're overqualified. You're still playing small. You go into a job, you know you're overqualified for a why because you are afraid. In 2015, I went and got a job at McDonald's. Yes, I did. 
one of the things I knew about depression is you can't isolate because that's the worst thing to do. And I just wasn't well enough to use my master's degree. And I said, I'm going to go get a job at McDonald's. And my son was like, no, you're not going to get a job at McDonald's. And I said, yes, I am. I figured it was something I could do to keep myself social, you know, just to engage with people. And I lasted for two days. And the lady said, I'm going to give you, excuse me, $9 an hour. I said, okay. I still didn't go get my check. I need, they owe me a check. But shortly thereafter, I became a director of social services and made $60,000 a year. See, sometimes you're running from it. Maybe part of your new life is that you embrace the opportunities. Now, no opportunity wasted. Stop sitting on it. Build. Don't focus on tearing anybody else down. For, okay, they hurt you. Okay, that's a fact. Right now, you have to build. This is your building season. Pay attention to the distractions that are going to come your way. Be very intentional with your time. Spend your first 20 minutes of your day setting the tone for your day. Stop sleeping with, you know, with your phones in your bedroom. Instead of watching all this TV, grab a book, a book about something you want to learn something about, or maybe something that you really, really like. But whatever you do in order to build this new person, you must be willing to do new things. You must be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. So don't even get jealous about the person who now, you know, they got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home. Were you willing to do what they they did? Then why you got an attitude? Then the other thing is, can you handle it? You say you want to be in the light, but the hot, the lights are hot. When I go to TV stations, honey, I was going to this one TV station, a CBS station, and the lights were so bright. And I was like, okay, I'm melting. Can, can we hurry up? Because I'm melting. But if you don't want to take the heat, then maybe you don't want to be shining. What you said, which statement got me in tears? Which which statement was that, darling? Can you stand to be blessed? Changing your attitude, changing your perspective, changing your story and be easy on yourself. Don't tell everybody what you up to. Girl, you tried to do that last year. Girl, I knew that. I mean, how many more times you going to try it? Stay away from people like that. They'll suck the life out of you. Because misery loves company. Sometimes people are jealous. Sometimes people are selfish. Selfishness means I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get what I have. And I don't care about anybody else. Now, I had to come to terms with some selfish behaviors because I wanted to build a new life. I thought I was just wonderful. It's okay. You're going to be all right. Trust me on that. Right now, do me a favor and hit the button on the subscription page here on my YouTube channel, which is Dolores Jones TV. Facebook, how you doing? Thank you for coming back. The numbers are growing and are growing and are growing. And uh, Instagram at my comeback coach. Love to see y'all. OK, so don't take rejection so seriously made you cry. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And you don't have to be. Maybe you're not even tea. Maybe you're Kool-Aid. Maybe you're lemonade. Okay. Maybe you're a nice fine wine that gets better with time. Okay. Just because they don't want it. Doesn't mean you're not valuable. We need to learn to go where we are celebrated, not tolerated. And stop accepting the unacceptable. Making excuses. Well, you know, I guess, I guess. And learn to trust yourself. And if you're wrong, guess what? You can correct it. 
All right. So those are just my thoughts. I just stayed on here a little longer with you all uh, talking about how to build a new life. One of the things you have to do is remember choices, the choices you make, the habits that you embrace. Self-reflection. What steps do you need to take to be the person you choose to become? Number one, you got to let the other person go. Well, last year, I would have cussed you out. Okay, we know that. This year, I'm practicing self-control. This year, I'm not even going to put myself in that situation. This year, I'm going to go to that event. This year, I'm going to take that class. This year, I'm going to love on myself more. And instead of thinking of 365 days a year, let's look at right now in this moment, what are you going to do for yourself that's going to assist you in going to the next place and to the new life that you can build, that you get to do this. You have the tools. We just want to fine tune them and make you aware of how to use them. And right here, this is your biggest tool right here is your mind. All right. So protect it. Got to go. Got to go in and make some moves up in here. Thank you for being with me. Put a one in the comments if you understand this. Put a two if you plan to do something with it. Okay. Dolores Jones Comeback Coach here on YouTube. Dolores Jones TV. Hit it. Boom. There you go. Facebook. Hi, honey. And Instagram. How you doing? Okay. See y'all a little later. I'm out. Girl, you got to laugh at yourself sometime. Okay, okay.